Hey guys, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and today we're continuing on with the 2010 AP Calculus AB Free Response Questions, and let's get into it. A zoo sponsored a one-day contest to name a new baby elephant. Zoo visitors deposit entries in a special box between noon. The number of entries in the box t hours after noon is modeled by the differentiable function e for 0 less than equal to t less than equal to 8. The values of e of t and hundreds of entries at various times are shown in the table above. Use the data in the table to approximate the rate in hundreds of entries per hour, which entries were being deposited at times t equals 6. Show the computations lead to your answer. Okay, this one's pretty easy. Um, what we're going to do is the rate, the rate is a slope here because there's hundreds of entries per hour. So I'm going to do a, some kind of slope to approximate um, uh, times t equals z, 6. I'm going to use the secant line slope between here. I'm going to do, um, so I'm going to say e prime of 6, the derivative, is about equal to e of 7, which would be the secant line slope minus e of 5 over 7 minus 5. It's always going to be like that. So you got to find the point and you got to surround. You got to you, you so you got to do the points around because six is between five and seven here for t. So that's twenty one minus thirteen divided by two, right? Uh, and so that's eight over two, and that's four. And this is hundreds of entries per hour. Okay. Use the trapezoid sum, which the four subintervals given to approximate the value this. Using correct units to explain the meaning of this. Okay, so this is an average value, right? This is uh, this is the standard formula for average value. I'm going to add up the area under it, and I'm going to divide by the width of the interval. Okay. So um, trapezoid sum. Oops, not not infinity eight, e of t dt. I'm going to do is approximately equal to 1 8th. And with trapezoid sum, what I'm doing is I am multi doing the width of each interval and I'm averaging the two values here. So this is 2 times 1 half times 4 plus 0 plus 2 times, oh no, this is not 2, this one is 3, 5 minus 2. 3 times 1 half times 13 minus, plus 4 plus um, 2 times 1 half times 21 plus 13 plus uh, 8 minus 7 is 1 times 1 half 21 plus 23 okay this is this is what we we'll do with the trapezoid rule I average these two values and I multiply by the width that's the area of the trapezoid okay so this is 1 eighth times um, I can't believe this is a calculator question but that's fine uh, one that's two plus let's see oh I see 17 times three halves uh, 51 over 2 plus 21 plus 13 is 34 because the two and the one half cancels and the one half of 40 uh, that's 22 this one right 4 13 3 1 half 17 over 2 times 3 yeah okay that's fine Okay, and um, I get, I'll use a calculator for this. I have my calculator over here to the side. I'm going to do 2 plus 51 over 2 plus 34 plus 22 divided by 8. 167 over 16. Get about 10.43. Four three. I mean, I'm I'm just gonna put it in decimal. Ten point four three eight. Now the units of here are um, hundreds of entries. Okay. Because that's that's what an average. Because e, it's the same unit as e. So what do we say about like this? Is this is the average number of entries? entries over the eight hours over the eight hours yeah okay it's the average value so you got to say this is the average number of something 
See, at 8 p.m., volunteers begin to process the entries. They process the entries at a rate modeled by the function p, where p of t equals that. According to the model, how many entries had not yet been processed by midnight? Okay. So at the end of the 800, we have 2,300, and then I have to integrate. This is a rate. So to find the total number of entries, I gotta I gotta integrate from 8 to 12. Why 8 to 12? Because that's when the um, the entries were being processed. They weren't being processed outside of this time. So 8 to 12 of all of this stuff. Oops. Okay. So let's say p equal to, let's put in the equation, uh, t, uh, x cubed minus 30x squared plus 298x minus 976. So integral of p between 4, no, 8 and 12. Sixteen. Now this is how many they processed. They processed six hundred, sixteen hundreds of entries. So, but what we have here is the number of entries is twenty-three. So twenty-three minus sixteen is seven hundreds of entries. Entries? Was it entry? I don't know. I don't know what entry is. Okay, uh, according to the model from part C, at what time were the entries being processed most quickly? So when was the rate? This is a maximization question. When was the rate of P process max? Or when was, I mean, P is already a rate. Yeah, so I want P of T is max. Well, I need to know when p of t is equal to zero. Find critical numbers. Okay. Um, so I need to take the derivative. That's how I find max critical numbers. p prime of t is given by 3t squared minus 60t plus 298. That equals zero. Okay. I am going to use a calculator to solve that. That is not fun to do in my hand. So I'm gonna say, um, who, let's see, solve 3x squared minus 60x plus 298 equals zero. Solve for x, solve. How do I do the solve equation? Well, I'll just plot it. Already taking too long. G so G equals 3t squared. You just plot it and then, oh, let's do x's. You just plot it and then see where the x values are. I don't need to see that. I don't need to see that either. Just need this. Root 9.18, 10.816. Okay, so I have two options here. I have t equals 9.184, and I also have t equals 10.816. Now, when you want to find an absolute maximum, you you just compare points, honestly. Um, I can see that if I wanted to think about which one was actually a maximum, a maximum is when the, this is the plot of the derivative, right? I plotted um, P prime here. Um, because it's going from positive to negative, this is a minimum. Here the slopes are going from negative to positive, right? Here, oh no, 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 I, I want slopes that are going from positive to negative. So I want this point here. So this point here is a relative max. This one's a relative min because it's going by first derivative test. The derivative is going from negative slopes 
to positive. See, these slopes are negative, these slopes are positive. It's going from negative to positive from left to right. So really, I just need to compare, look at that one. Okay, and then I also want to compare the endpoints, which is, so I want to compare P of T and T. I want to compare at the points uh, 8, 9.184, and 12. Because I need to conclude the endpoints. I always need to include the endpoints when I'm doing that. Okay, so because I've written this as a function here, I can do G of 8. Wait, no, that's G. I don't need G any. <laughs> P, no, I, um, yeah, I need P. P is the rate. Zero, okay. That's right. Okay, so I have the value zero, 5.0887, and then eight. So this is the maximum one. So T equals 12. So this is an increasing function, so I guess it's just sort of the maximum there. If I looked at the plot, just to kind of just see, like let's look at what the, the, the plot of P looks like. I can include it here. See, here I got the maximum, but at 12 it's even higher. See, that's why I gotta check endpoints. Even though this is a local max, this value over here is higher. That's, that's the answer. Okay, let's take a look what we got here. Uh, that was the previous question. About 400 entries per hour. Uh, 10 point, oh, I must have entered this into the calculator wrong. Uh, I have all the math right, so slightly off there. I must have, I must have plugged something in wrong. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't immediately see what I did wrong. Um, one, two, Say two, three, two, one. Yeah, I don't know. I, I must have plugged in the calculator wrong. Calculator wrong, or did, so I'm a little bit off there for some reason. But you know, I had the the right sum idea. Uh, average number of entries in the box over eight or between noon and eight p.m. Okay. Um, seven hundreds, uh, seven hundred entries, and then most quickly at times t equals twelve. See, they didn't exclude this point. Um, even though I excluded it because it was a minimum, I just ignored it because I knew it was a minimum. I'm a, and I was looking for maximum. So that's why I only compared these points. I excluded that one. But it's something you can do. You do not have to exclude points when you're doing critical numbers, when you're finding absolute maximum. So that's something you can consider. So I hope you guys found that helpful. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching the video guys. Please leave a comment, like, or subscribe below to catch up more of the content and see any links below. I offer free homework help on uh, Twitch and Discord. See you guys in the next video.